My name is Mark Escobedo. I'm a senior sales engineer at Westpac and subject matter expert here to talk a little bit about accelerated aging from a test labs perspective. So the presentation is going to focus on ASTM F1980, the accelerated aging protocol. We're going to talk a little bit uh, about the principles of accelerated aging. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the standard in, in reference to humidity. Uh, this is a question that we get a lot. Uh, I, I want to put humidity into my aging. And the whole idea about humidity, or the answer for that, is it would, it would depend. I'm looking at the package or the product. So the packaging materials aren't necessarily sensitive to humidity in the sense it needs it. And if we look at the, use the Arrhenius equation, he doesn't mention anything about humidity. He doesn't talk about percent humidity, relative humidity, uh, moisture ratios, or anything like that. So we don't really need to add humidity into the equation. And if we do want to add humidity into the equation, how much humidity? And what should our acceptance criteria be? So let's uh, take a little look about what humidity might look like. And this here is a basic psychrometric chart. So it basically illustrates the dry bulb temperature on the x-axis and the wet bulb temperature. And that's what is used to measure relative humidity. Then on the far right y-axis, we have a ratio of grams water per gram dry air. And then in the middle, we have these lines sweeping up. And as you can see, there's a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way to 100% relative humidity. And the red line denotes about 20 degrees C and 60%. And if we draw a straight line across, you can see that as temperature increases, the relative humidity starts to drop. So we started at 60, we cross the 50, and the 40, and the 30, and somewhere around 35 C, we cross uh, 40 C, we cross about 20%. And by the time we get out to 55 degrees C, we're well below 10%. I've zoomed in a little bit here to kind of describe the same thing, that at about 53 degrees C, we have about 10% relative humidity if we kept the same ratio, the same water to dry air ratio, we get about 10%. If we moved over to 23% and 50, uh, 23 degrees C and 50%, that is standard conditions, by the way, in our, according to ASTM D4332, you'll notice that the corresponding line is just slightly below that if we keep that same ratio and it is still below 10%. So what happens if we want to increase humidity? So we're gonna age our product and we're gonna increase humidity and a typical aging temperature is about 50 degrees C. So if we increase the humidity at 50 degrees C, even to just 40%, which is the tip of that arrow right there, how much moisture is in the chamber? And the point here is a lot it's off the chart. Now, is that, a, is that necessarily bad? What we've experienced early on when we were doing accelerated aging, we used to put in very high humidities, about 75% humidity. And what you would notice is that the poly material, because it was laminated together with a adhesive, water-based adhesive, that it would separate. And you'd have these laminating, laminate separations of the material. And this was concerning because now you have to write an NCR and you got to dig around and do analysis on it and all that. And then you get your real-time samples back and you don't even see this. So you're like, well, well what's, what's happening here? And there's a lot of digging around and scrambling. So the point is, is that one, look at the scope of your testing, accelerated aging. Are you looking at the packaging or the product? And two, if you have a product that has sensitivity to humidity, meaning sensitivity to low humidity, determine what is an acceptable humidity before you introduce humidity into your accelerated aging program. So it's total moisture content in the chamber that we're concerned with, not relative humidity. So now let's talk about real-time aging. 
Does anybody know of a real-time aging standard, just by a show of hands? No, because there isn't a standard. There isn't a standard, there isn't a specification for real-time aging. So how are we going to define the parameters? Storage conditions? Well, as it turns out, we can kind of look to ASTM D4332 and kind of look at standard conditions, but they don't really call them storage conditions. And everybody's storage condition is going to be a little bit different uh, depending on where you are. And then what about seasonal temperatures? Uh, we're going to be concerned about those. And then uh, recording the conditions. Uh, if you take your samples and you just put them in a cubicle somewhere, uh, do you have a record of those conditions? Do you have a document saying that? And oftentimes if you've put your samples somewhere safe in a cubicle or something, what happens to if there's pilferage? You know, somebody needs just a few other extra samples and all that. So one of the opportunities that we provide for you or the solutions that we provide is real-time storage. And so we have large capacity real-time storage. Our storage conditions are about 25 degrees C, plus 25 degrees C, and there are fluctuations. There aren't any tolerances for real-time aging, so you will see some seasonal fluctuations sometimes, but that is recorded and those are submitted as an appendix in the report that we provide. And it's secure. So we check the products in and we check the products out. And overall, the chamber, the room, the real-time aging room, if you will, has good stability. We've had, we have good records and good stability over time. So what I'd like to kind of leave you with a little bit here is to define your test parameters, determine the needs and requirements for the materials being tested. And is this going to be a package test or a product test? Uh, and the reason why I keep bringing this up is because as if you're dealing with just the packaging, your, your concern is only the packaging, but your product people will want to probably ride the bus too. Uh, what if you have a product that's, or even your packaging, is stored at two to eight degrees C? So that's refrigeration, right? And so refrigeration is more about preservation, right? So the temperature is cold, you're preserving the product, the product is sensitive to high heat. And we get this, this question like, can I apply the Arrhenius equation to my product if it's stored at within two to eight degrees C? And the answer is yes, you can, but you have to understand what the product is. The product, if the product is going to be subject to spoilage. So if you end up with dead product at the end, that's not going to be very helpful for your product aging. And again, we're talking about product. The packaging is something entirely different. You can use that same equation for the packaging materials. You know, it could be uh, typical poly materials or it could be glass vials or anything like that. So your product level people want to put their product inside the package and age that, and then they'll take it out and they'll do their testing on it, okay? So that's why I keep saying, determine what the scope of the study is so that you don't end up in a dead end or painting yourself into a corner uh, with some false positives. And that kind of leads into deciding what your intended purpose is. And then of course, you know, by doing this activity, you're meeting the regulatory requirements uh, selection of test rationale, you, you, there's some things you have to rash, uh, create rationales or justifications for. Uh, why are you using this type of uh, temperature range? Uh, what's your storage condition? Acceptance criteria, we're always asked about acceptance criteria and we help our clients determine acceptance criteria. But that is really up to you. Uh, and then there's integrity tests. The integrity tests are the things at the end that did the aging have a adverse effect on the package or an adverse effect on the product. And our most main concern is usually the, the packaging because we do the uh, bubble leak test, the peel test. Uh, other tests for the product would be done at, at our client's site. So I'd like to leave you with a few references. Uh, ISO 11607 is uh, the guidance document for terminally sterilized devices. That's where this all starts. Uh, then there's F1980, which we talked about here today. And then ISO uh, 16775. I'm not sure if anybody, how familiar people are about the, uh, that document. 
but that is the guidance document on how to apply ISO 11607. And it also has verbiage in alignment with F1980 for the guidance document. And then, of course, if you really want to just get the answer and not have to do all the little calculations like I did, go click on that link there and use the Westpac's Accelerated Aging Calculator on our website. Have any questions, you can always contact us through the portal. Uh, you can call us. Resources page has a lot of calculators and other resources. Uh, we're an independent test laboratory for mechanical environmental testing, focusing on these industries. ISO 17025 accreditation means that the data that we produce is accurate and reliable, and we're 100% employee-owned. Thank you for your time today.